Messages after messages in my inbox have been asking about my feedback on the Matt Chandler situation. I have avoided trying to address it, and yet you guys know I've been a big fan of Matt Chandler. I've been praying about how to respond to the topic, and I really didn't want to just feel the pressure of everybody's talking about, it, so I need to talk about it right now. But the Lord gave me one particular passage, which I feel like sheds light on the entire situation. Let's begin. Hey guys, today is gonna be a little bit of a Bible study while also looking at the Matt Chandler situation. If you guys don't know, Matt Chandler is a pastor that I've referenced multiple times here on my channel. He's one of my favorite people to listen to when it comes to sermons. He's in my theological tradition, and so my husband is also a pretty big fan of Matt Chandler, and we love listening to the Village Church's podcast like sermons. However, with the whole Matt Chandler situation, it recently came out that Matt Chandler was having some kind of inappropriate friendship with a woman through Instagram messages. Ruth Salon is somebody that I enjoy watching on a lot of his videos. And in a lot of his videos recently, he has addressed this. He's kind of like current topics in Christianity kind of YouTube channel. And he has done his own feedback. He's like, this is why we don't need to be on Instagram. He's like, this is the problems and relationships between men and females. But I would like to go to more of the heart issue. And when people look at Matt Chandler, they start to speculate. They say, well, maybe it was starting to get like emotional cheating or emotional adultery. They look at Matt Chandler and they're like, well, maybe men and women should be able to be friendships. And it's kind of had all of Twitter, all of the internet debating what can male and female relationships look like in a biblical perspective. While I think that is a very important topic to address, and I've often recommended you guys to read Fee and Stewart, they have like a whole series on Christian boundaries and dating, Christian boundaries and marriage, Christian boundaries and like everything. I love every book that I've read by them. I haven't read all of them, but I would encourage you to kind of think of it in that aspect of having emotional boundaries with people that you're not married to and keeping at all times wisdom because I think our relationships depend on your role. Pastors have a different role than just a male friend with a female. And this video isn't really about that, but I will throw that out there. Boundaries in all of our relationships are really important. I would even argue that Jesus had certain boundaries with the disciples, with his family, with the Pharisees, etc. However, while praying about the Matt Chandler situation and honestly being pretty blue about it for the last couple days, the Lord put on my heart that this is a lot deeper than just Matt Chandler talking to a woman, that this is a lot more about his heart and our heart and all of our hearts. You see, the whole internet was blowing up like, ha ha ha, Matt Chandler finally got in trouble. Let's, you know, trash his name. And then other people were like, oh no, Matt Chandler. And then, you know, people like me were just like so confused watching the internet argue. And the Lord set my heart on the Shema. Now, if you don't know, I recently just learned this in my Hebrew class with Kairos. If you guys don't know, I recently graduated seminary and so I'm continuing my education by taking Hebrew with Kairos. I'll have their information down below but in my Hebrew class after every lesson she'll give us kind of like a takeaway like based on what we just learned this past week it was verbs then we'll go over to the scriptures and she'll give us an amazing application or theological takeaway just from the little bit of Hebrew we knew. And so this week's was on the Shema. The word Shema comes from this idea of not only hearing but hearing to obey and that's the call when we hear the Shema outlined in Deuteronomy 6 4 through 5 which we'll flip to in a second. We're called to hear it and obey for it not just to be like passive listening but hear it in the way that it transforms our life and outworks in the way that we live so if you do not already have it memorized memorize this scripture hero israel the lord our god the lord is one you shall love the lord your god with all of your heart with all of your soul and with all of your strength you see, this really is kind of like a Bible study with on the Matt Chandler situation because when you look at the Matt Chandler situation, I think it's like kind of safe to say that maybe he wasn't loving the Lord with all of his heart. Maybe he was loving people and humor. I don't know. I can only assume that maybe they were sending memes back and forth and joking a little bit too casually. And again, that's an assumption, but we can only assume based on the information that's been shared. What's so problematic about that? Well, he was running to a human, another sinner instead of the Lord. Do we not believe the Bible? Is true because the Bible says that the Lord knows us better than anybody else and loves us better than anybody else and is closer to us with the Holy Spirit living within us than anybody else. And so if we truly believe the Bible, we would run to the Lord first with the funny memes. We would run to the Lord first when we're feeling lonely or got an idea to bounce around or wanting to just joke around with somebody. If we truly believe what the scripture said and we were running to the Lord first, he would then send us to our spouse, not to another person. That's what the Lord's kind of had me chewing on 
recently. You see, God's calling us to love him with our everything. It's not just some legalistic check the boxes kind of relationship that he wants. He doesn't just want part of our heart, us to just kind of give him our vote or give him our appreciation or clap for him. He wants our everything. Today on our way to church, today is a Sunday when I'm filming because it's Labor Day weekend and my husband wants to do some stuff tomorrow. So I'm filming today. I usually don't like filming on Sundays though. I will have y'all know. However, I'm filming today on a Sunday. And so today when we were getting ready for church, we were getting dressed and our boys were talking about the suspenders that they were wearing and the bow ties and they love getting dressed up. They say, I look like Blippi. If you guys know who Blippi is, they love getting dressed up like Blippi. And they were talking about how fun it is to get dressed up. And I said, well, boys, we don't just get dressed up to get dressed up. We wear our best and we give the Lord an entire day of the week because we give him our all. Well, this is just a simple, small sign or reminder that we want to give the Lord our best, our full, our whole heart, our whole mind, all of our strength even our memes or our silly joking. God didn't die on the cross and pay for our sins to have our leftovers, our emotional leftovers, even just a little bit, like a tie, but for our all, our full emotional commitment, our full life commitment, being living sacrifices, Hebrews 12, one. Let's um, move here. Let's unpack this really quick, this idea of a covenant, because I think this will help make my point better. I've shared before that this covenant God made with his people was spelled out mostly in Deuteronomy, like we're here in Deuteronomy 6. The Ten Commandments, those are supposed to be two tablets that kind of definitely doesn't. Let's pretend these are the Ten Commandments. This is kind of definitely the ancient Near Eastern way of making a promise. Instead of signing a contract or doing a pinky promise, I've shared this all before, I'll have a video linked at the end of this, but the ancient Near Eastern way was to have a suzerain vassal treaty, a Hittite suzerain vassal treaty is kind of like the language that we use. And so what we see spelled out here in Deuteronomy 6, is a lot like what we saw in the ancient Near East. They wanted full commitment. I want you to think of like contracts that you might sign with your phone billing or your insurance or whatever. Like you are who I'm using for internet, for water, for phone, for like three years, whatever the contract is that you sign, right? It's exclusivity kind of contract. It's me and you, dude. You are my insurance provider. You are my internet provider. I don't know if you have to sign contracts for insurance, but you guys get the point, right? Okay, kind of like that in our today understanding is what God is saying in Deuteronomy 6. He's like, it's me and you, dude. It's not you and what everybody else thinks about you. It's not you and friends and other sinners because other sinners are gonna bring in their own brokenness. It's me and you, dude. And so this idea of exclusivity really plays into the language or the repetition that's used in this verse. And so the language in this verse, with all, with all, with all, makes it very clear that he's not asking for some. The word there, bikal, I think is how you would say it, is Strong's Hebrews 3605. And it's the whole, any, every, all of your heart all of, the whole, any, every, your soul, the whole, any, all of, every of your strength. But what is it referring to when it says heart and soul and strength? Heart would be Strong's 38, 24, and that's your inner man, your mind, your will. Soul would be your person, your desire, your passion, your appetite, your emotion. That to me screams the Matt Chandler situation. It screams to me our responses to the Matt Chandler situation, the way that we desire for him to be either awesome or really bad. What we desire out of this situation screams to our soul's passion, life, person, or appetite. And then with all of our strength, that's Strong's Hebrew 39, 66, and it's Veminous holy speedily is all of our everything. He longs for all of it. If I were honest with you guys, I would say I was really disappointed in the Matt Chandler situation. I was disappointed in the fact that it happened and he wasn't wiser. I was disappointed in the way he announced it. I was really disappointed in my response, others' response. I mean, it's just made me pretty sad. But throughout this whole process of trying to process it and watching the world blow up over it has made me realize just how much of my heart, my passions, my everything was not resting in the Lord, but was resting in my spirit spiritual idols or the people that I look up to. And so whether Matt Chandler or someone else is our celebrity pastor of choice, <laughs> whether or not we are the person like Matt Chandler that's running to somebody else unhealthily, we are called, we are all called together to run to the Lord first with our whole hearts, with our whole mind, with our whole strength, with our everything. And watch as he satisfies our deepest longings. What we wanna run to Instagram Messenger for, what we wanna run to social media for, what we wanna run to our celebrity pastors for, what we wanna run to the internet for is 
all satisfied in the Lord. And so you can watch video after video here on my channel. You know, I share Bible study tips. So like you can, you know, want to learn all the Bible study tips, but ultimately if you are not also running to the Lord with your everything, if you're just running to my videos, my videos will fail you because what you long for is in the Lord. And I am just another broken human being and I cannot satisfy your deepest heart longing. And your spouse is also if you're married and your family is also and your church is also. And I feel like the church is going through a season right now where we're seeing the publication of church hurt and pastor failures and just brokenness after brokenness after brokenness and we keep running to other broken human beings as if they're gonna satisfy our deepest longings. But what does Jesus say to the woman at the well? That broken Samaritan woman who had ran to, we can only presume, she had ran to man after man after man. Now, some people make the argument that men had deserted her over and over again, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Either way, she had been turning to mankind to satisfy her deepest longings, presumably like what Matt was probably doing in this friendship. Presumably what we may do when we look at these celebrity pastors, we wanna look at other people, right? We wanna idolize their spiritual leadership or the churches, but we're all broken sinners. He says, no, come to the well that never runs dry. Jesus says, I offer you living water that satisfies your deepest longings, that never runs dry, that satisfies your soul. I think we can all relate to that. What if we ran to Jesus? Now, I know this is only going surface level. We can go so much deeper, and I would really encourage you to go deeper by really looking at this Hittite suzerain treaty structure. It really adds so much richness to our understanding of what God is calling us to in this relationship he's called us to. So check out this video here where it unpacks the Hittite suzerain treaty kind of format and how God uses it for his glory. And I'll see you guys in this video.